Tesla's beleaguered Elon Musk is dragging the company down. NAFTA talks of stall and auto industry tariffs. RBS shares are going up despite swallowing a milestone $4.9 billion fine. And $2 billion water city is ratified by the Integral Port Administration of Progresso. Hi there and welcome to today's edition of Mexico News Network's Breaking News Business. I'm your host, Joseph Garza. Let's get on down to today's information. Elon Musk's fame used to be a huge advantage for Tesla, but now it's becoming a problem. Every time Tesla's unpredictable CEO says something bizarre to investors or starts banging away at his iPhone keyboard, the stock can pitch up and down. Even though shares were well off their 2017 highs just prior to the announcement of first quarter earnings, they were trending up until Musk lost his cool. Shares swiftly tanked. The next day, they were clobbered. Musk is entitled to his opinion and he's entitled to be upset at journalists. But he shouldn't be telling them what to write about if they think autopilot might be so oversold to the public that some drivers think it can provide a higher level of self-driving than it does. Musk does, in fact, believe that this semi-self-driving system saves lives, and over the long haul, he could be right. But that's assuming autopilot evolves over time. At the moment, it's effectively just advanced cruise control. Here's another issue. No one wants to rob a multi-billionaire of his fun, but attending the bright lights and madcap spectacle of Fifth Avenue and the Met Gala doesn't exactly send a disciplined signal to the assembly line workers at Tesla's plants, nor to the engineers who are now furiously trying to correct the damage done by Musk's mistake of using more automation in manufacturing the Model 3 than Tesla could handle. And then there is Musk's blatant nepotism. Tesla's board is very light on auto experience. Only Robin Denholm has ever spent any time in the car business, and that was with Toyota in Australia, according to his bio. With all the misfires Tesla has endured since just 2015, when it launched a production-plagued Model X SUV, Musk, as chairman of his board and CEO, could use some more seasoned advice about running a car maker company. The Model 3 debacle should have brought this home for shareholders. It's possibly the most thoroughly botched rollout of a hyped vehicle in the history of the industry. Celebrity Musk has been quite valuable in getting Tesla to this point. But ever since the catastrophe of the Model 3 launch, which began last year and still hasn't been rectified, Musk's flaws have been on display. He might be famous, but that isn't going to get the Model 3s rolling out the door. In other news, negotiations over a new North American trade deal have hit a major snag, leaving White House officials increasingly uncertain of their ability to hit their May 18th deadline for securing congressional approval of a new deal before year's end. The main stumbling block involves a dispute over determining which automobiles are given duty-free treatment under the agreement, according to five industry and U.S. government sources. The United States wants 75% of each automobile given duty-free treatment under the agreement to consist of North American parts, up from the current 62.5%. The U.S. proposal would also require that 40% of the work making passenger cars be performed by workers making an hourly wage of at least $16, far above Mexican factory workers' average pay. Mexico countered the U.S. plan on Tuesday, proposing a 70% North American content requirement, rejecting the U.S. wage figure, and suggesting a 10-year phase-in period for the new rules, rather than the four years eyed by the Americans. Two weeks ago, White House officials were optimistic about prospects for a breakthrough in the talks, a senior administration official said. While U.S. officials have not abandoned hope, they acknowledge that the odds of quickly reaching a deal are getting further away, the official added. Missing this week's deadline could have significant consequences given the political calendars in both the United States and Mexico. Depending on what happens in the next 10 days, Trump could opt to pause the negotiations, claim a partial agreement, or even withdraw from the existing accord, though that appears unlikely. There has been talk that the administration might try to salvage the talks with a high-risk strategy involving withdrawing from the existing agreement and presenting Congress with a choice between no deal and a partial agreement in principle. 
In other headlines, the Royal Bank of Scotland Group, RBS, announced it has reached a deal with the U.S. Department of Justice to pay a civil penalty of $4.9 billion to settle allegations of mis-selling mortgage-backed securities in the U.S. between 2005 and 2007. These complex debt products, which were underpinned by bundles of mortgages, were one of the key triggers of the crises. $3.4 billion will be covered by existing provisions set aside by the bank to cover the fine, and the remaining $1.5 billion will be booked as a second quarter charge. Upon making the announcement, RBS shares jumped as much as 6% at the open in London. While the share jump may seem counterintuitive, the fine brings resolution to an issue that has long hung over RBS and is also not as bad as some feared. Last year, investors worried that the bank could be hit with a fine as big as $10 billion for its actions in the run-up to the crisis. RBS CEO Ross McEwen called the settlement a milestone moment for the bank. He said that the fine is the price that has to be paid for the global ambitions pursued by the bank before the crisis. Removing the uncertainty over the scale of this settlement means that the investment case for this bank is much clearer. While the settlement has been agreed in principle, RBS said that a legally binding agreement has yet to be signed with the U.S. Department of Justice. Moving on, an ambitious new water city looks to place the Port of Progreso on the map with the creation of a luxurious tourist attraction unique to the region, featuring a navigation channel for large ships. The original idea was conceived by architect Jorge Ongay Lara, who estimates an investment of $2 billion to give a totally new image to the Port of Progreso on the northern Yucatan Peninsula. Lara declared that the idea has already been presented to executives of the Integral Port Administration of Progreso. He also stressed that the project would be very important not only for Yucatan, but also for other states in the region, such as Quintana Roo, Campeche, and Tabasco, as it will allow a boost in touristic activity in a significant way, resulting in great benefits for the whole Yucatan Peninsula. The sand produced by the construction of this canal would be used for the construction of the island that would house a series of towers for luxury hotels and condos, an aquarium, and a replica of the Chichen Itza pyramid. An isle will be built with a surface of 490,000 square meters that will feature canals, hotels, shopping centers, restaurants, dive shops, water sports centers with jet skis, boats, water skiing, and the largest aquarium in Latin America with 120,000 cubic meters of water. It is a very ambitious project, but it will allow the Yucatan coast to have a commercial growth, which would help, among other things, to expand cruise tourism in the whole region of southeast Mexico. Lada affirmed that currently most of the requirements that the shipping companies requested to berth in the home port of Progreso have been solved, such as improvement of roads, lighting, and the construction of a fisherman's wharf. And finally, let's review the markets. The Mexican peso decreased 0.17% to 19.3831 from 19.4165 in the previous trading session. On the other hand, the IPC Mexico increased 0.38% to 46,729 from 46,552 in the previous trading session. This was all for today. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Joseph Garza. Remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Log on to MexicoNewsNetwork.com for more information on Mexico and the world. Until next time.